local, trusted. This is News 3 at 6 on KBTX. The Aggies came up short in their first game in the College World Series after falling to Oklahoma 13-8. to Despite the outcome, the support of the 12th man was on full display. News 3's Connor Bean has been at Stage 12 this afternoon for the official Aggieland watch party talking with fans. Connor? Yeah, Clay, after the final out, this place emptied out pretty quickly. But if you were here earlier, you would have thought you were at Olsen Field. Fans came out to cheer on the team from Aggieland to Omaha. I talked to some fans that came all the way from the Woodlands to come down and watch the game, and they were saying the energy at stage 12 is what the 12th man is all about. 12th man is a real thing, and when this, when you have this bad inning and the second inning, your true character comes out, and it's never, never give up, never give up, and you got to go one base hit at a time, and. Um, we're hoping, and even if not, we just know that 12th man always stands true to who we are. Now, Visit College Station and Stage 12 are going to host these watch parties for every game the Aggies are playing in Omaha. Live in College Station, Connor Bean, News 3. Thank you, Connor. Pringles, Bubbles, and Olsen Magic. When the Texas A&M baseball team needs support, the 12th man is right there to lift them up. A&M fans say this is what makes Texas A&M culture special. News 3's Abigail Metch was at the Omaha Aggies tailgate this morning to learn a little bit more about the 12th man. Hi, Abigail. Okay, hundreds of Texas A&M fans gathered at a local bar in downtown Omaha this morning. When I got there, I talked to Troy Clonch's dad, Stan, and he told me he was taken aback when he first walked in the door and saw how many people showed up. But then he remembered that's exactly what A&M fans do. They show up. If you're, if you're not an Aggie, you can't explain what being an Aggie is. It's something you really can't explain or describe. You just have to kind of be a part of it to understand it. So what's the mystery? What is Texas A&M culture? The culture of A&M is why people went to that school. But why? What is it about the culture at A&M that makes it different than the rest? It's unique. And I think we walk around town, you'll see a lot of different universities here, obviously, for their schools. But you'll never see people where you can walk around and say, howdy, gig them, and to where you automatically feel a bond. If you see a little piece of gold on somebody's hand, that's your best friend. And maybe that's why 866 miles away from College Station, a sea of maroon and white can be seen walking through downtown Omaha to Charles Schwab Field. Hundreds of fans here together to support the Aggies. And if the team needs to get picked up, hey, we're not playing as well, we're going to be right there in it. It doesn't matter. We're going to lift you up. All it takes is one base hit. This is an AM fans mentality. Win or lose. We bought one way tickets, but we're confident that they're going to win today and they'll win on Sunday and, and they're going to win again and again and we're going to take a title home with us. Absolutely. Of course, this loss was not what AM fans were hoping for, but they're already moving past it and looking ahead to Sunday. They said that their favorite part about this team in particular is that they never give up. Live in Omaha, Abigail Metch, News 3. That much is very true. Never count this baseball team out. Hey, it's a little bit of a sad sports day. We're hoping that it's not going to be a sad weather day. At least a few of us have gotten some rain early this afternoon. Along and east of I-45 have been the big winners, especially just to the east of the Brazos Valley. The closest right now is inching towards San Jacinto County. We still have a little bit ongoing right now in uh, Leon County. This is very scattered, but uh, what we've seen is a lot of activity just to our east, and it will slowly continue developing westward over the next couple hours. As of right now, though, if you haven't got any rain just yet, especially if you're west of Highway 6, I think the chances are starting to come down pretty quickly. Over the next couple hours, though, we'll watch, wait, and see. Keep the pinpoint weather app handy if you're about to go out the door. When we go to bed tonight, things will start to clear out, and then we wake up and try to do it again into our Saturday and Sunday. There's a little small rain chance going in through the rest of this weekend, maybe into early next week, too. Obviously, a lot of heat. We'll get you another pinpoint radar update coming up here in just a bit. Hi, Addison Davis. Hi, Addison Davis. Earlier today, 85th District Court Judge Kyle Hawthorne swore in a new lawyer, Addison Davis. Alongside Addison was his father and grandfather who both practiced or practiced law in our area. The now three generations of lawyers say this moment was special, especially with Father's Day this weekend. We've been waiting for this time to come for some time, and it's, it's a joy to be part of that and to be honored as a uh, as a father, as a, as a fellow lawyer, I look forward to 
uh, being able to share stories with each other and helping each other and go from there. It is so special just because we now have three generations of lawyers. We have teased him today and said, okay, you're going to have to have your son or daughter to go to law school. So I have four generations. <laughs> Now the son Addison will be practicing civil litigation and insurance defense work in Dallas and says it's a cool opportunity to be able to follow in his father and grandfather's footsteps. In the Houston area, an hours long SWAT standoff is over tonight and no one was seriously hurt. This happened in Jersey Village. Authorities say they responded to a robbery call at the Quality Suites Hotel shortly after 2 a.m. local time. Investigators have confirmed there was a man and a woman inside the room with a suspect. Both hostages have since been released. Police say the suspect barricaded himself inside the hotel room for nearly nine hours. CHI St. Joseph Health says some of its patients' private information may have been exposed in a data breach. The hospital system says a third-party company found names, social security numbers, postal, and email addresses were possibly exposed back in March. Potential victims are being offered services like credit monitoring and identity protection services. Those affected by the data breach will be sent a letter in the mail. A woman in Houston is suing the Harris County Sheriff's Office two years after she was attacked by a police dog. Two years ago, Maria Gordado Melgar says she came home late one night from work and slept in a makeshift room outside of her home so as not to wake her children. At the same time, the Harris County Canine Unit was on a manhunt. Gordado Melgar says without warning, officers unleashed the dog into the room where it mauled her. Her attorneys say when officers found out Gordonado Melgar was not the person they were looking for, they recalled the dog. And frankly, we expect more from our Harris County Sheriff's Department. If, an error, if a mistake is made, if an error occurs, accountability should be there. Uh, they should be forthcoming. They should, they should be willing to make things right. Uh, but, they do, but they have it. Her attorneys argued that police would not have unleashed the dog in a white neighborhood. And if you were hoping for a gas card rebate, Sorry, it's pretty unlikely the Biden administration will make a case for them. That's according to the Washington Post. It quotes someone familiar with the matter. The official says sending out gas cards would be tough because there would be no way to make sure the cards are only used for gas or that they don't get stolen from mailboxes. Not to mention Congress would still need to approve the money for it. Another element here that's interesting, some experts say gas cards could artificially boost demand at a time when it might be best to let demand cool off to meet supply. And here's a look now at the latest price of gas on average in Texas. According to AAA, drivers are typically paying around $4.68 a gallon. That's up from that's about up four cents from last week. Diesel prices are also hitting a record high today in Texas. The average price for a gallon is $5.30. After the break, we'll check in with News 3's Kayla Britt, who talked to fans at a College World Series watch party that are looking forward to a win for the Aggies on Sunday. News 3 sports coverage of the Aggies in the College World Series is presented by Barker's Heating and Cooling and The Sleep Station. Your source for the Brazos Valley's most accurate forecast on air and online. The KBTX Pinpoint Weather Team. You're watching News 3 at 6 on KBTX. Although the Aggies came up short 13 to 8 in game one against Oklahoma, Aggie fans aren't counting them out. News 3's Caleb Britt was at the watch party at stage 12 and says fans are predicting a win for Sunday. The energy never died here at stage 12, and fans are confident the Aggies will make a comeback like they always do on Sunday. Fans said the Aggies fought to the end and played with a lot of heart like they always do. One fan tells me he was holding on to hope until the very end since the Aggies are known for making a big comeback. He says he's disappointed in today's loss, but he's already gearing up for Sunday because he's confident the Aggies will prove the doubters wrong. We're fine. Ags, we're still good. We're, good. We, we're in the loser's bracket, but it's okay. A couple more wins, we're right back in it. And um, so I'm feeling, I'm feeling stressed out and disappointed, but uh, I still have faith that we're good and we're gonna win. Fans are eagerly waiting for the outcome of tonight's Texas versus Notre Dame game to see who they'll face Sunday. Live in College Station, Caleb Britt, News 3. Thanks a lot, Caleb. As we step out to our weekend plans, we still got a chance for a little bit of rain. It's uh, closing pretty quickly, that window is, though. We'll get you a pinpoint radar update, a look ahead into the weekend, coming up right after the break.
whole lot of sunshine and uh, just some clouds that look a little bit bigger, a little bit taller than what we've seen the past couple of days. That's pretty much what everybody has dealt with this afternoon, though. A few of us lucky few of us have uh, gotten some rain. This is what the uh, view looks like as you look off to the east here from our Sam Cam or Bower Stadium and a couple of big thunderheads. That's about it so far. But we did get a couple of quick little bursts of showers across. Uh, we'll call it the northeastern counties, but uh, Trinity Houston County. You uh, have the best overall chance at seeing some more activity. And as we uh, get a little bit closer to some of that folks on Lake Livingston, or if you know anybody that is, that's a couple of big thunderstorms that are awfully close, close enough to be struck by lightning there. So again, if you got folks that are out that way, that is uh, a pretty heavy thunderstorm that's coming through. We'll see how much longer it lasts. These have been very pulse type thunderstorms, so likely to uh, continue to pulse back down as it gets closer to San Jacinto into Walker County. But again, there is that chance. A couple more little popcorn showers in between Hilltop Lakes and Centerville. This may be giving a lucky few about a tenth of an inch or so if that and then a uh, heavier activity continues to make your way up towards Palestine back towards uh, Lufkin and up into far northeastern Texas as well. More thunderstorms across the state of Louisiana and uh, we'll give it the old college try going into tomorrow again as well. But as far as the rest of this evening goes, pinpoint forecast still insists that we'll have at least a little bit more development through about eight o'clock sunsets at about 830. We will very quickly wrap things up after that. So I think by about nine or 10, if not even before that, we are done and over with all of the rain that the few of us will see as far as tonight is concerned. Let's go ahead and go into tomorrow and see what we can find. We will start off with a few morning clouds. Things will clear out and then we'll find a couple more popcorn showers and uh, thunderstorms. Coverage did not look great about 10 to 20%. But again, there is that chance through the early evening hours. Sunday looks very similar. Again, a little bit of green here and there on the radar. A lot of us missing out. That is likely, though, going to be our best overall chance for rain over about the next 10 days. So even going through this evening, still about a 20 to 30 percent shot that we see something pop up here locally. Keep your fingers crossed. But again, don't hold your breath. Sunsets at about 830. Southeast winds 5 to 15. Saturday and Sunday, more of the same, but probably even a lower chance for some rain. I've capped it off at about a 10 percent shot. We'll wake up each morning in the upper 70s and finish near 100. May just miss the uh, triple digit mark tomorrow here in town and then Sunday onward into the rest of the week. We got more triple digits coming our way. Heat index hasn't been that terrible. There is a little bit of added humidity into the air right now, but uh, you only add a couple more degrees for the feels like temperature uh, and it is still very steamy. You can see where there's some rain cooled spots across the US from Atlanta up through uh, Lexington, Kentucky. 93 what it feels like right now in Omaha, but te actual temperatures in a skyrocket as we go through the weekend. That high pressure system continues to move off to the north and west. We will continue to cook, though, even though that high moves a little bit farther away from us. Again, heat index is somewhat bearable right now, or maybe we've just gotten used to it. It's about 100 degrees as you uh, step outside right now. Temperatures tonight get down into the mid to upper 70s area wide. It will be a stuffy start, and uh, we got plenty more where that came from. Highs at or above 100 every day from Sunday onward into next weekend. Thank you very much, Max. Coming up next in sports, the Aggie baseball team opened up the College World Series against Oklahoma. Morgan Weaver will be live from Omaha with post-game reaction following the Aggies' loss to Oklahoma. News 3 sports coverage of the Aggies in the College World Series is presented by Barker's Heating and Cooling and The Sleep Station. Did you know if a major hurricane was making landfall here, a residents evacuating the Galveston and Houston areas could cause traffic backups here and create an impact all the way to the Brazos Valley, all while severe weather effects can still be felt. That's why you need the News 3 Hurricane Tracking Chart. Download your free copy at kbtx.com or pick one up at any of these locations. News 3's Hurricane Tracking Chart, presented by First Financial Bank, Mid-South Electric Co-op, Texas Star Power, and KBTX News 3. Well, the College World Series officially underway in Omaha. Texas A&M kicking things off with the first game this afternoon against Oklahoma. The Aggies are back in Omaha for the first time since 2017, while the Sooners are back for the first time since 2010. Both the Aggies and Sooners looking to get off on the right foot in this double elimination bracket. It was payday for OU in the second inning, cashing in a total of eight runs. Tanner Treadway singles through the left side as Peyton Graham makes his way home to pad their lead 5-0 in the same inning. Jimmy Crooks blasts a ball to right field. The three-run homer puts the Sooners up 8-0 in the second. 
Bottom of the third, the depth of Charles Schwab doesn't seem to bother Jordan Thompson. He sends a three run shot into the Aggie bullpen, his sixth homer of the season. And Texas A&M is on the board down eight to three. Jackson Nicholas for OU though sends a 370 foot bomb to right field. It's a grand slam giving the Sooners all the insurance runs they would need taking a 12 to three lead in the fourth bottom of that frame. Austin Boast bringing the bubbles to Omaha. He crushes one out of left field. The solo homer chips away at the Sooners lead 12 to four. Bottom of the seventh, Aggies fighting to make a comeback. Jack Moss drives to center, scoring Cole Kaler, making it 12 to seven, but A&M not able to pull this one off. Oklahoma wins it 13 to eight. Now Morgan Weaver is following the Aggies in Omaha this week and joins us now live after catching up with the team following the loss. Hey, Morgan. The last time the Texas A&M baseball team won a College World Series game was back in 1993. And after today's game against Omaha, it's Oklahoma. It's still 1993. Today, the Aggies couldn't overcome Oklahoma's high powered offense in their exceptional pitching, ultimately falling 13 to eight. And credit to their pitchers for, you know, filling up the strike zone all day. And that's what they did. But, um, you know, we know the bats are there and, and the runs will come with that a good chance but um, obviously we didn't pitch well we didn't we didn't defend gave just gave up a lot of free bases and then they got the big hit so you got to credit them uh, the two big home runs uh, when we set the table and we can either cower down and put our tail between our legs and go back to college station or we can fight my money's on our guys fighting the Aggies will play the loser of Texas A&M and Notre Dame on Sunday at 1 p.m. Live in Omaha, Morgan Weaver, News 3 Sports. Thank you, Morgan. Now here's a look at the updated bracket. Notre Dame and Texas just got underway on ESPN. The winner will advance to play Oklahoma. The Aggies move to that elimination bracket, and they're going to fight to stay alive Sunday at 1. Round 2 of the U.S. Open, Aggie Sam Bennett is, in an am is an amateur and he sits right at the cut line after shooting an even par yesterday. He shot 73 today to move to three over par overall. Colin Marikawa leads the field at five under with several players just below him at four under. And tonight, the Brazos Valley Cavalry soccer team is in action, taking on Houston FC. Kickoff set for 730 at Edible Field. Still got a couple hours of daylight, a couple hours and some change, and we'll uh, see what additional activity we can see popping up But the heaviest is right on the edge of the Brazos Valley and San Jacinto up now through Trinity County as well. That could be a quick inch for some folks just east of Lake Livingston and into Trinity County too. So again, not saying no to a couple more scattered showers as we go throughout the rest of the evening, but uh, most of the heavy stuff has already fallen. So download the pinpoint weather app. Keep it with you. We'll see some more of these popcorn showers and a couple thunderstorms through about the eight o'clock hour. Then we go into the weekend. There's still a chance each afternoon, but coverage overall looks pretty dismal, but that's probably our best overall shot over the next several weeks. Saturday, Sunday and Monday all come with about a 10% chance for some rain and starting on Sunday. It looks like triple digits area wide 100 plus all the way into and probably out of next weekend. Hot in Texas, hot in Omaha, just all over. It's hot, hot everywhere, everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> stay cool, everybody. That's our report for now. Thanks for joining us. We hope you'll tune in tonight at 10.